In this video, I'm going to share 21 top tips to get you through your hard mode replay of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Always ensure that one of your lesser control characters has synergy materia paired with something useful like Comet or Petrify. Synergy casts the first rank of the linked materia automatically at no cost to MP or ATB. It does this every time your other controlled characters use an offensive ability, so it activates all the time. Comet can be a great choice despite its long cast time because it often interrupts enemies and knocks them down to the ground. Petrify though is absolutely crazy. It'll automatically cast Quake on mobs which will interrupt and do decent damage with some of the mobs being weak to stone, resulting in a quick kill. This pairing of materia works great with either Aerith or Yuffie. Aerith because of her high magic attack power, but Yuffie because she can cast Quake four times if standing in an arcane ward with doppelganger active, a bit like this. On top of that, if you equip another Petrify with MP Absorb, you'll actually gain MP for that non-controlled party member each time Quake is cast. It's an absolutely brilliant way of regaining MP, sometimes quite rapidly. In this fight, you'll see that Aerith starts with 0 MP, but by the end, she finishes with 71. Pairing of repeated materia is also how you achieve those very impressive mega crit numbers, as well as being the key to incredibly fast, efficient AP farming to quickly level up your materia. In this single target example, I have Aerith equipped with two magic focus materia, both of which are paired with ice and a third ice being paired with swift cast. So when Aerith uses an ice spell, she benefits from all three blue support materia because they are all linked to ice, resulting in an instant cast mega buffed Blizzarga for over 90k damage. To break the 9999 damage limit, you'll need the Genji Gloves accessory, which we'll come back to later. For instantly erasing packs of mobs, you can add a magnify materia into the mix paired with another ice. On top of that, you can add an MP absorb materia again paired with ice, which will then refund you a percentage of the ice damage back as MP, essentially meaning that the spell was free to cast. If you do enough damage, you can actually use this technique to recover MP from previous battles. You can also use the same repeated materia tactic for big, cheap party-wide heals by using Magnify, Magic Efficiency and Swift Cast, all paired with healing. If group crowd control is what you're after, you can use Time Materia for Stop or Binding Materia for Sleep, paired with Magnify and Magic Focus. Kate Sith is an excellent choice for this, as his Iron Megaphone can be used to extend detrimental statuses by 50%, which can be further extended if you equip him with the Enhanced Marlboro Orb. This can be particularly helpful with the time material because on most mobs, including the World Intel bosses, you can actually freeze the stagger with stop. Just remember to remove the Magnify effect with L1 before you cast it so that it lasts as long as possible. Not only will that allow you to put out a lot more damage, it'll also help with the 300% stagger trophy if you're going for the platinum. HP absorb materia paired with enemy skill works very well with plasma discharge as you get a small heal each time you fill an ATB bar. If you combine that with Cloud's use of disorder or triple slash, you'll do tons of damage and healing very quickly. Prayer works well as a party-wide heal, although it is a bit expensive at two ATB bars, and Chakra is great for single-person healing, especially at low health. Another thing you can do though, especially if it's been a tough fight, is to use Soothing Breeze from the enemy skill materia right before the last mob dies. The ability will carry on casting until it's finished, even though the battle is over, which can provide a lot of healing, free of MP, for your whole party in between battles for just one ATB bar. On Aerith, if you find yourself low on MP, don't forget about her Drain Soul ability. It's not the best source of damage, but the MP gain is solid. Also, don't overlook Transcendence and especially Radiant Ward. 
Transcendence costs one ATB bar to start charging, and when it reaches rank two after about 30 seconds, you can unleash some serious damage at no cost to MP. Radiant Ward can be absolutely game changing. Not only does it give Aerith much better and faster mobility within that giant ward, anyone casting from within it gains invincibility. So if you spot a devastating attack loading, you can completely nullify it by casting a spell just before it lands. Radiant Ward can also be stacked on top of an Arcane Ward, providing anyone within it with invincible double casts. It also buffs Aerith's basic attacks and builds ATB and stagger very quickly. It really is very, very good. Plus, it turns Aerith into a laser firing machine, and who doesn't like lasers? Similarly, there is Yuffie, whose purification ability restores MP as well as HP, which can be very useful in a clutch battle. Limit Siphon is another underutilized material that can essentially be abused to continuously loop limit breaks. It can be set up with or without the Goethe Dameron accessory, which you get for completing the brutal fights in the combat simulator. Have Aerith equipped with the Enhanced Expeditionary Medal, the Limit Siphon material and First Strike, and another party member with the Goethe Dameron or the Limit Booster accessory. When the battle starts, have Aerith use Limit Siphon, which fills her own limit gauge right up. Then use her rank 3 limit break, Rising Fury, which fills both of the other party members' limit gauges. You can then use one of them to put out some damage with the benefits of invincibility, then Limit Siphon again on Aerith. Then just repeat the process over and over. Without the Goethe Dameron, it just takes a little longer to get going, but once you have that first limit bar filled, it's exactly the same. One quick thing to mention are the rest benches and chocobo stops, because in hard mode, regular rest benches only restore HP. However, the chocobo stops will allow you to regain your full HP and MP with the use of a cushion. These are mega cheap and easy to transmute and they make the open world fairly trivial, at least up until chapter 13, which is where things take a bit of a turn. As for grinding, you can take it or leave it because you will naturally level your materia through replaying the story in hard mode, but grinding does have its place. Hard mode massively benefits, especially toward the end, from having seven lots of fully maxed steadfast block precision defense focus, HP up and MP up materia spread across all of your characters. So make sure to stock up on those early. They can all be purchased from the materia shop in Cosmo Canyon. It'll also help to have a bunch of chakra and prayer materia max level two so that you can heal without using any MP. Revive is another material that's also useful to buy lots of early on and level up, mainly for the final chapter when you don't know how your characters are going to be split up. In terms of priorities though, you should concentrate on leveling Magic Focus, Swift Cast and the three elemental material as these provide the most significant buffs to your combat. And the best way to do this is using the now well-established loop in the south of Gongarga. And if you really want to optimize that, resulting in less time spent grinding, there are a few things that you can do to really speed it up. The first is to use Petrify as your offensive materia of choice. You can only equip three of these, so you'll want to pair them with Magnify, Swift Cast, and MP Absorb. You'll also need First Strike materia and the Choco King Cape for two full ATB bars at the start of combat. Fill the rest of the slots with stat boosting materia like magic up, lock up and enemy skill. The main reason to choose Petrify is that its range is absolutely massive, meaning that you'll never miss any of the mobs in a pack, even if they look really far apart. And as you'll be using just one character to insta-kill all the mobs, you can completely fill all of your other characters with all the materia that you want to level. In the open world, Everyone gains AP at the same time and at the same rate, whether they're in your party or not. Unlike the combat simulator where only active party members receive the AP. 
Going back to priority materia, like Magic Focus, they require a ton of AP to level, and it can take an age to max out, so you'll want to pair those up with AP up materia for double AP. You can also equip a character with the Chocobo armband armor, which gives triple AP. You get this item from beating the Chocobo Sage in a Chocobo race in Nebel. If you combine your priority materia with an AP up, in this particular armor, you'll receive six times the AP, which is a massive boost and significant time saver. Using the Gongarga loop, which can be completed in just under three minutes, you'll gain 900 AP for that priority materia, so it'll level up in no time at all. To get the time of the loop down to that speed, you need to make use of your chocobo. It only needs to be summoned once, after that it will come back to you at the end of combat, which will make the whole thing feel much faster. For even more speed, make sure you assign Quake Level 3 to a shortcut in your combat settings, and don't forget to enable the magnified version of the spell by pressing L1, otherwise it will only cast the single target version. The Gongaga grind loop can also be done on any of the game's difficulties. Hard mode doesn't provide more AP, so feel free to use chapter select and set it to whichever difficulty you prefer. If you haven't done so already, you should complete the fights on Gilgamesh Island, which will allow you to craft the Genji accessories, like the Genji gloves I mentioned earlier in the video. Personally, I completed these challenges on normal at level 70, just before I attempted hard mode. And if you want a ridiculously fast and easy way to hit 70 once you finish the story, check the video in the corner for how to do just that in only 5 minutes. The Genji Gloves are arguably the most useful item in the game because they break that 9999 damage limit for the wearer of the gloves. Once you defeat Gilgamesh, you'll unlock the transmute recipe to craft them. However, first you'll need craftsmanship rank 16, which you will get by crafting everything in the transmute list just once. For the gloves specifically, you'll need five exquisite beast hides, which you'll likely already have. If not, they can be purchased from Gongarga or are dropped by many of the beasts all around the world. You'll also need a sinister Quetzalcoatl talon, which you get from killing Quetzalcoatl on hard mode in the grasslands, as well as a shiny Marlboro tendril from killing the Marlboro regional boss in Gongarga. Lastly, you'll need six pirate jet sams, which you get from the purple floating crates throughout the Meridian Ocean. You should already have the Corsair's compass from completing the Pirate King's treasure quest, which will make finding the jet sam just a little bit easier. Once you've got the materials, craft the gloves and the damage limit will be removed for the character that's wearing the accessory. It really is a crucial item to have, especially if you plan on doing the harder, brutal and legendary fights in the combat simulator. Maxing out your folios as much as you can will also be a big help in hard mode. I'd very much recommend resetting your side quest data, selecting chapter 12 or 13 and completing them again. They provide a big chunk of SP and will really help in the late game. Yes, some of them are a bit of a pain to do, but this time you'll have the benefit of all of your previously completed world intel, so you can fast travel all over the map. Some of the side quests can be completed in just a few minutes, so don't skip on them if you can tolerate the slightly painful ones. In terms of builds, there are a huge variety to choose from, but generally speaking, you'll want to use the Cetron armor pieces from the Temple of the Ancients in Chapter 13, and either Hades or one of the enhanced bracelets on your main party. Each character should be equipped with a HP up, MP up, steadfast block, and precision defense focus. Equip DPS casters with magic up and melee with strength up. Speed up and lock up can be helpful too if you have the space for them. For the open world, I tend to prioritise Cloud as my main DPS, he always has elemental materia paired with either fire and ice, or thunder and wind in the weapon slot, depending on the enemy. He has enemy skill paired with HP absorb, first strike, strength up, HP up, MP up, precision defence focus, steadfast block, luck up, ATB stagger, prayer and dark side equipped. For certain encounters, switching the elemental materia to an armor piece will be more beneficial than having it in a weapon slot, as a fully leveled elemental will actually heal you instead of damaging you with that particular element. 
As for bosses, especially in the combat simulator, you'll want very specific setups and configurations per challenge, but a really solid build to try is Yuffie's phenomenally powerful Brumal ability build. For this, you'll want to equip Yuffie with the Speed Demon Keychain, First Strike Materia, and ATB Boost. On Aerith, you'll want to set her up for maximum cast damage with repeated link materia such as Fire or Ice, ATB Boost, and the Genji Gloves. Have your third character equipped with Magnified Time, Empowerment, First Strike, and whatever other materia you prefer. When the fight starts, you'll want to cast Magnify Haste. Then switch to Aerith and use ATB Boost and place an ATB Ward underneath Yuffie. Now switch to Yuffie and spam Brumal Form whilst on top of the ATB Ward. Not only will Yuffie take no damage, she will rapidly fill the ATB bars of other party members. Then have Aerith create an Arcane Ward for double casts and even a Radiant Ward for invincibility and then cast Faith on her. Once that's set up, you'll be able to spam whatever max rank spell Aerith has equipped at no cost to her MP, and she will do a lot of damage very quickly. I pretty much only used this build to clear all the brutal combat simulator fights and had far fewer issues than with any other build I tried. It really is overpowered. Now, on the subject of boss guides, I was originally going to make a series on how to do all the brutal and legendary fights. However, somebody pointed me to OptiNoob's YouTube channel, which has an absolutely superb series of videos on how to do all of the combat simulator brutal and legendary fights. His videos really are exceptional, so if you're looking for decent builds with full commentary on how to use them, I highly recommend checking them out, and I'll include a link in the description below. Oh, and just as a tiny bonus tip, when you unlock hard mode, you also get a new option to enable auto pickup of materials when you run over them. It's not game breaking by any means, but it is a nice little quality of life setting that you can enable. No doubt I've missed a top tip or two, so if you have anything to add, please let me know in the comment section below. I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It's been one of the more challenging games to platinum, especially with some of those bloody mini games. But all in all, it has been a blast and I very much look forward to the final part. Thank you for watching and a special thanks to anybody that has liked, commented or subscribed. It means a lot.